Bonjour, practical dreamers, it's Claire from IntegralAlive.com. What superpower do you use most? And how much do you use it? See, we are taught that we need to be super at all times, to perform at our best, etc., etc., exponential growth and all of these jazz. And yes, this approach allows us to make things happen, big things. But it is also unbalanced. And as much as I love it, and you know, I actually use it myself, uh, being in the flow and making things happen. But we also have to recognize this is the just one side of the story. And we often forget the other side. And when I say we, it's not only us, like individually, but collectively, this is not so much talked and talked about as the other super active side. And so I think this is uh, an approach that is great and it's also in balance. And in the long run, this is compl completely counterproductive because it works until it doesn't. So let me give you uh, an example, a story um, of a client of mine when I was doing Shiatsu back in the days. <laughs> And she comes and her main um, claim uh, is uh, she has a pain in the, um, in the shoulder, in the arm, the right shoulder. Okay, let's see it. So, and it's summer, it's really hot. So I can see she has a kind of a um, tank top so I can see her shoulder. And she lies down on the belly and immediately I can see the muscle spasming the muscle of her shoulder spasming, moving. I don't see it very often. I mean, people are tight, especially in the shoulder, but to that degree, it's really impressive. So I ask her, are you in pain? She says, no, I mean, it's tender, you know, it's tense, but no pain. Mm, that tells something, isn't it? And by the way, she's not crazy. <laughs> she's just, this pain didn't happen at once, it happened, the tension built up little by little. So she got used to the tension and then a little more and then a little more. You know, it's the story of the frog being in the water and you make it boil and the frog doesn't say it. So we have the same thing. So that's how she can totally be honest in saying, no, I don't feel pain. Whereas she should, seen the the level of tension in the in her shoulder but she got used to it so her nervous system will ride in a way that it overrides it now why is that a problem well <laughs> I, I think you, you know why but <clears throat> the thing is thing that struck me most and why i'm telling this story is what she says about it to her, the problem was not so much she had pain in the shoulder, but it was blocking her for making things. So she told me, well, because I, I asked a bit around and she told me, well, when I feel like my arm is too tense and I cannot go on, I just switch to the other arm. And so I train myself to do things with my left arm and hand to be able to do things as before. Can you see the problem in that? So this is where the super make it things happen, et cetera, story ends and become counterproductive. Uh, uh, and by the way, she's not crazy. She's not a sadomasochist. She just has a lot on her plate. And she's an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, and she needs to get things done. And she just doesn't know any other way to cope. And she doesn't realize that this is not a problem, it's the way to a solution. So follow me in, in that. See, if you listen to me before, you know that I talk about multiple intelligences and that often we rely only in the rational intelligence. And in our society, it totally runs the show. It's like a dictator upon a hierarchy of the other intelligent that do, don't have um, a word in the play. And that's too bad, because when they cooperate, we are much stronger. <laughs> and we, do, we have, basically, life is easier. 
So rational mind sees these kind of things as limits. Oh, wait, I have a plan. I want to do this and this and this and that in those orders. I have steps. And if I can do it, if I cannot do it, sorry, I've got a problem. So I will find a way to do it anyway, like I have planned. So basically, that's what her um, solution was. I cannot do it with the right hand. Okay. It doesn't mean it's too much. It just means I have to find another way to do exactly the same thing. Now, let me introduce you somatic mind. Somatic means physical, mean the body, physical body. So somatic mind, it just tells facts. It just tells, hi, your muscles are tired. And if the rational mind overrides it and say, oh, okay, I will just use the other hand. Well, then you will have a second message a bit later. Hi, now the other muscles are tied too. And then if you go on, well, like she did, then another message. Uh-oh, okay, hi, now the muscles are failing. You get the picture. So where the rational mind just wants to push through because it has a story, it has a plan, and it, it sees any limit has to be crushed. If there is a limit, we can you know, expand your comfort zone, get over it. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Somatic mind works differently. It's very gentle, but it's also very firm because it just tells facts, not stories. When the somatic mind says something, it means something is really happening. It's not something that you think is happening, like happens with the rational mind. It's something in your body that is happening, want it or not. It's there to warn us. So it's very gentle and it's always talking, by the way. Most often than not, we don't listen, we don't hear it, but it's always talking and it will talk until you're here. And sometimes it will have to scream, like in my client's case, it will have to scream till we hear it. That's what we call burnout. Were there signs before? Yes. Did we hear it? No. For many reasons. So somatic minds warns us that you need, uh, we need another strategy because the limit is structural. In not, it's not in our head. It's structural. And it's not a problem. It shows a solution. The only... Because I see you coming. <laughs> the only... <laughs> Um, exception to this rule is when we want to do a specific thing in a specific time. So maybe you're an athlete and you're going to push over your limit to run a marathon or something like that. But even then, there are some limits we cannot push further. So we can, in a certain capacity, we can expand our physical limits. But what I'm talking about here is our rational mind overriding this, the message of the somatic mind again and again and again every day. As let's be honest, we do every day, a lot. So what I'm saying is basically when we experience a limit, what we experience as a limit, instead of hmm, reacting to it and being in resistance, what about listening and taking the other point of view, maybe of the somatic mind? It's not a limit, it's a feedback. It's a feedback a sign that the way we are operating is not optimal and is going to be a problem. And now it might be just a tiny problem, but it, it, it's growing. So what can we do not for it to become a bigger problem? Because if we can, if we push through, then it will just grow. And maybe if it's just for one hour or two more, maybe it's okay. But really watch into it because there will be a final limit. I like to take the image of the Pisa Tower. And I probably did that day with my client. You know the Pisa Tower? You, you know it, right? It's this famous Italian tower that it's not vertical. It's leaning on one side. 
And it's been leaning like this for ages. I don't know how many, how many centuries, but a lot. But every year it takes, leans a bit more to the sides, a few millimeters every year, if I remember correctly. The thing is, it's going to go on and probably it will never crumble because people will, uh, they, they will do uh, things for it to stop at some point. But imagine we don't do anything. It's gonna be, it's gonna continue to lean a bit, a bit, a bit. Is it going to gently fall on the side? No, it's not. It's going to gently lean just a little bit just a little bit, just a little bit. And then all of a sudden it's gonna crumble because it will have reached the final limit. And that's, excuse me, I have to plug my computer. And that's what will happen with these limits. We perceive it as a limit, but then at some point it's just, okay, listen, I'm screaming now, just stop. And if we don't listen that last one, we just crumble. Again, that's another definition of burnout. So this simplistic model we've been taught where rest is seen as a limitation sometimes. I mean, come on, how many articles and blogs, videos have you seen about people being so proud because they wake up two hours, three hours earlier in the morning and get so productive and we never see them month after because first, maybe the first week, it feels great because they're actually really productive. What happens two months after, two years in, 10 years in? We never see that. So anyway, my message today is we don't need to be superheroes. We are humans. And that's already a lot. And our somatic mind, our physical body reminds us and knows that we are human. So if we, li if we listen to it, we are much more powerful, actually, than when what we believe to be when we are feeling superheroes. So next time you feel limited by your body, my exploration for today would be feel into it. When you feel limited by your body, by some tension, by maybe your level of energy going down, instead of being upset about it and resisting, lean in. Don't push through, lean in. Ask yourself, what feedback is that? What feedback is my somatic intelligence giving me? That if I listen, I can do things in a smarter way. I can do things better. And I promise you, when you listen to your body before it needs to scream, life gets easier. And that's my wish for you today. Thanks for being here. Drop your comments and questions on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, as always. Like it bit a conversation. Uh, you know, I'm always super curious to know what you do with this exploration. Did you try it? How did it go? And that's it for this week. Subscribe to get more and spread the fierce love. Share to anyone who needs to hear that right now. If you know someone whose body is screaming, <laughs> send them here. And stay tuned for the next video. Until then, enjoy the listening. Bye.